Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm here with Big Al. Hello. I'm here with Nathan. Hello. Okay. Nathan, where are you taking us? We're in Biggin Hill Airport, but you're taking us somewhere quite yes. interesting. Yes, so we're at Biggin Hill Airport today, and uh, I fly um, for a collection of aircraft known as Shipping and Airlines, uh, based here at Biggin Hill. They've been here a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a beautiful collection of vintage British aircraft, and uh, we're going to go and have a look at those today. How exciting and how what a privilege! What of a privilege! Course, yeah. Thank you very much. Of course. So in this sort of realm of vintage aircraft, this collection is very well known. Um, we always get invited to lots of events and mm -hmm. things uh, to display, and you'll see once we get in there, very Art Deco design and uh, very very rare aircraft. Some of these are one of one or one of only a handful left in the world. Wow. Um, is this open to the public? Or? It's, uh, it's not necessarily open to the public. They have got a flying school, um, which of course, you know, if you're a student, you will see these aircraft because they all live in the same hangar. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, if you give them a call, if you're interested in flying, and of course, if you go to a lot of vintage aircraft uh, events and things, mm -hmm. you're bound to, to see us there. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that well, very shortly. That. Thank We're you. Just walking up the uh, airport perimeter road at the moment, past all the old hangars. Pretty amazing. There's no graffiti as well, or van. Aha, this is a, a listed building. A listed building. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome to Shipping Airlines. Wow. <gasps> so, this here is, uh, is actually not part of the collection, but um, it's owned by someone who has it kept here and maintained here. So this is a Cessna 195, which is a very, very old American aircraft. Um, so Cessna are actually sort of the sparring partner of Piper, the one we looked at. Um, but this, of course, is much older than the Archer we looked at. This is probably 19 sort of 50s and 60s. Um, you can tell by the very Art Deco sort of design and paint to it. And uh, you wait until the interior to get that very 1970s. It has not changed at all. You don't typically see it anymore because. Uh, it's, you know, it's very difficult to maintain this sort of engine um, because of the way it sits. All the oil pulls in the, in the very bottom mm -hmm. of the engine, which makes it very, very difficult to start it and that can cause a lot of damage if not, not done properly. Um, but a lot of the older airliners will have engines like this, like the, your DC-3, um, your Constellation. A lot of the old aircraft have uh, a radial engine like this. So you can see through the wind through the window there, it's got an amazing interior. Wow. Very, very vintage. Dragonfly. So, so a lot of people look at this and they think, oh, it's a Dragon Rapide. Um, I must admit, there are a few parts of it that do look like a Rapide, but once you get up close, there are a lot more differences than similarities. So this was sort of a business jet of the 1930s. Um, this was made in 1936 and it's had a lot of rebuilds and restorations in its life um, and there are only two left in the whole world. The only other one is in New Zealand and it's painted a very similar colour uh, scheme to this but it's blue and, and silver. Um, and you actually have two, these two big pieces that are glued together and you can sort of almost see the seam where it was glued together if you get up close. Um, but it's all fabric, so you can uh, you can see there. You can see where the fabric sort of joins on the wing, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, various supports and things for the for the biplane element to it. Um, but the engines are sort of only about 150 horsepower because they're, they're quite old. These are yeah. Havlin engines, um, but thankfully the aircraft all here they all share. Well, most aircraft here share, share the same engine, so it's yeah. very easy for the uh, mate side of things. Thank you, mate. Miles Messenger. A Miles Messenger. So this was originally designed to be an observer aircraft for the military, um, but uh, the military rejected it, uh, and so they started putting them into civilian use, and so there's quite a number of these uh, in the country. 
all made for civilian use, but this is the only flying example with a military serial number on it, because this was originally made for the uh, RAF, um, but they, they turned it down. Uh, so, yeah, very, very rare to see one with a military serial number on it. There are a few around, mm. exactly the same design, but yeah, weren't originally made for the military. You tell them they're made largely of wood and fabric. Yeah. They think, oh my goodness, I'd never get in one of those. <laughs> but that's what the technology was yeah. back in yeah. the day. And it's good enough that it's lasted this long. And they're still long. going. Still yeah. going, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the Piper Cub, which I fly a yeah. lot, which is most likely in the other hangar if it's not flying, that is pretty much only wood and fabric. Yeah. Um, and that was, yeah. That's it takes about half an hour to get it's up. It's very, very small <laughs> aircraft. So we'll have a look at that if it's yeah. next door. I've seen it go up. Probably you flying yeah, it. And, uh, it, was, uh, yeah. it was like two steps back and one step forward. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, this aircraft is uh, a very, very awesome aircraft, I think. This is called the Hornet Moth. So um, a lot of people know the Tiger Moth, yeah. which is a biplane open cockpit trainer. So this was put forward to the military when they asked for an enclosed cockpit trainer. Uh, but eventually the chipmunk took the cake, that one there. Um, but this one again is then just converted to civilian use. Mm. I mean, but yeah. to lose speed very quickly, you have got the air brake there as an option. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful plane. I mean, uh, look, if you wanted to have a little peek in the, on the inside, you can see it's amazing. Uh, oh, look at finish. that. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, really, What's really the beautiful. Yeah, they are a bit. Oh. So a little bit of oh, the civilian coupe. Um, Sorry, this is a this is a civilian coupe. Now you, you will not see another one of these. Uh, this is the only one in the world. And oh, wow. they only made about five of these. Um, they're all handmade, and this is the only one still in the world. We've got some parts for this, but uh, this is the only one you will see. Um, and it's a very, very huge privilege that, uh, you know, shipping and airlines have it. It's, it's beautiful and I'm, it's even got the original propeller on it, so... Really? A 1931. Oh my God, look at the finish on it. Beautiful. It is amazing, amazing aircraft. So you can see the design of the engine is very similar to that one over there. It's mm. a radial engine, albeit a much smaller one, but exactly the same sort of concept. Beautiful, beautiful plane. Feel free to uh, yeah have a little look in through the uh, through the window. Yeah. Have a look at the uh, yeah. go to the different museums. The wheels are very reminiscent of bicycle wheels. Again, a little allude to uh, the Wright brothers who were originally a bicycle manufacturing yes, company. Yes. So yes. yeah, a lot of aircrafts have very similar components to sort of the early bicycles. I always find it bizarre that just in 65 years yep. between the Wright Brothers' first flight and putting man on the moon. The, the chain is the, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. I mean, between the Wright Brothers flying and this aircraft, there's only a difference of 30 years. Wow. So, if you bear in mind the, the Wright Flyer mm -hmm. and you look at something like this, you know, unbelievable the amount of progress that, that happened. No, I, was, I was on the floor. So, the, this one was with the Army Air Corps for most of its life. And this is a very common aircraft. So it's, it was built largely in, in uh, Canada, so that's why the sort of abbreviation for it is the DHC-1, which stands for De Havilland Canada 1. Um, so this was, you know, designed in, in the UK, but built largely in, in Canada. Um, and it was used for initial training uh, in the RAF and also AEF flights or air experience flights for the air cadets. It's in the front. And you've got uh, very similar instruments in the back seat for uh, a student. Um, well, in a student instructor setting, the student would be in the front and the instructor in the back. But typically, the pilot sits in the front on this one. Um, and they just stuck with it. But it makes them very, very difficult. Yes, it is. So these are all um, privately owned aircraft that uh, are maintained stored here at Shipping Airlines. So these aren't, don't make parts. Yes, yeah, so you can take a picture of these if you like. So the Piper Cub back here is one that I did all my all my training on to fly the old aircraft. And 
you can see it's painted up in the sort of USF or sort of khaki colour, isn't it? Yes, it's uh, wow. It's it's an amazing old lit day cross. It's very very tight in, inside so yeah. to balance the weight out. Oh, okay. Oh really? Otherwise, if you flew from the front, it would be extremely nose heavy. Um, <laughs> one of these. It's very it's, raw. Yeah. yeah. This is the one I was photo. This one as well has got a fantastic uh, centre centre cap there, as it's an American aircraft. <laughs> so how much fuel? So the fuel tank in this one sits right above the feet of the person sitting in front, and the way we know how much fuel is in it is by this little thing here. So if you've got no fuel, it looks like that, and it's on a cork float, which floats on the top of the fuel, and it eventually goes down as you're using more and more. And if I take it out, you see exactly what I mean. That's what sits on top of the fuel. Right. There we go. And uh, there's just a rod attached to it. So as you're using fuel up, it will just go down and down and down. And as soon as it hits the bottom, you've got 20 minutes of fuel until you run out. Um, so you've got a little bit of a reserve. A little bit of a reserve, yeah. But you don't want to be cutting it that tight because no. this is not a particularly oh, quick airplane. No. Uh, so this one's got about two hours endurance, really. You don't want to fly much more than that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Thanks Nathan for taking us around the uh, fantastic uh, hangar, those vintage aircraft, that was absolutely fascinating. We didn't get it all on camera really, I was just listening to Nathan talking. Um, but thanks, yeah. that, that was very, of course, very what a privilege. My what a privilege. I, I, I love talking about them because uh, it's very important to keep these aircraft going. Of course. Uh, they've, they've survived this long and fl been flying for this long, so it's important to spread uh, the joy and the awareness of yes. this sort of vintage operation uh, to keep them going. Because unfortunately, these day, this day and age, I'm sure there are, but I don't know many uh, pilots my age that are, is interested in yeah. the older stuff. Yeah, of course. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's very important, and it's my pleasure to show you oh, guys no. around. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, all the normal stuff we do. Yeah, like, subscribe, yeah. comment. As <laughs> comment well. as well, yes. <laughs> uh, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.